During these times, we've been forced further and further apart, having to take school from home, work from home, talking to our friends from home, all these different things. Mind you, the restrictions are coming off, but a lot of us have been either forced or preferred to work from home, schooled from home. So as we're getting further and further away, nothing helps us more staying together than a webcam. So in this video, we're going to be going over an unboxing, overview, and some product usage, an overall review of the Nexago N970P 4K webcam. So come over here real quick, let's get to the unboxing, and I'll talk you through all of it. All right, so here we are again, the Nexago N970P. Let me go ahead and get rid of this wrapper so that it doesn't look so horribly annoying with all the lighting. All right, so AI powered 4K EPTZ conference cam with remote control and 10X digital zoom. All right, N970P, we can see the camera here along the bottom. Enjoy better video experience with Nexago AI powered 4K EPTZ camera. Nothing along the sides besides the serial number top. Ultra HD 4K auto frame EPTZ remote control 10x digital zoom and noise reduction mics with an S. And then along the back, features, specifications, and everything 4K UHD 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second, supports 2560 by 1440 at 30 frames per second, and 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. Image sensor is a Sony low illumination 8.5 megapixel sensor, up to 10x digital zoom at 4K at 30 frames per second. It has a fixed focus, field of view, video formats, microphone, package includes, the camera of course, a USB-B to USB-A cable, a user's manual, and a remote control. It will require two AAA batteries, not included unfortunately, but so what. <laughs> then the website, which we will need later on for the drivers, and basically that's it over here. So let's go inside the box. A slush in there. All right, so it is a sturdy, strong box. Download the Nexago webcam setting software from nexago.com software. Very important here, you can control all the lightings and all different settings of the webcam. First off, we have a three meter USB 3.0 cable. It's kind of nice that it says it on the packaging so we don't have to guess or measure it. And of course it comes tied up over here. So USB B right over here, USB 3.0, and then USB 3.0 over here as well, of course. All right, so taking this apart, here we have the manual, which we're going to go over everything in this video, so you don't have to worry too much about it. And then we have the big webcam, but I'm gonna put this aside for right now. Let's see what else is in here. And we have big old remote. It's a nice looking remote, full featured, has a ton of different buttons, camera select, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, asterisk, zero, pound, and then focus, zoom, auto, manual. This is so we can look around, which is pretty cool, and then bring it back home. And then we have the function keys right along here. And then where we would put in the batteries, which I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now real quick. I always recommend lithium ion batteries, but I didn't have any at the moment, so good old alkaline batteries works as well. I dropped it in the worst place, but I'll grab it later on. But there we go, I just put in the batteries for you. You don't need it at first, the, the back at first. I'll have to get that a little bit later on. And let's see anything else down here. Nothing else. Then we have the webcam itself. It does have this little clip right here so that you can go ahead, clip it onto your monitor. You can screw it into a tripod. That way you can have it on your tripod. So that's kind of nice. So then right over here is the UHD lens. Not that you're going to be able to tell what it is, but looks nice. Then coming right around over here is the activity indicator over here and over here are the noise reduction microphones. 
So yes, this does have dual microphones. I expect it to sound incredibly nice. Just trying to use the reflection so you can see them. And then coming along the back, we could find the USB 3.0 port. Just plug that cable in here and the other end into your computer. Open this up, pop it on your monitor and you're good to go. So let's get started with that real quick. And then we'll go ahead and connect the USB-A side to a USB-A port over here. So now we're gonna go ahead and connect the USB-B side to the webcam and then we're gonna start recording. All right, so once we start recording, if you want to let it access your precise location, click yes. I'm going to put no for now. All right. And you saw it popped up with the Nexago. Now, everything looks kind of weird right now. Aside it being my office, I'm recording right there with my other camera for audio while I don't have audio on this just yet. So let me go ahead and download the software. So we're gonna go over here to nexago.com slash software. And then webcam settings for Windows only, we'll download that. Then this can easily be used for OBS, Skype, Zoom, it is Zoom certified. Teams, XSplit, and we'll test a few of those here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Grab this software and install it. Close out of the browser, finish. And you get, you're lucky to see my beautiful face right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, so here we can do a manual white balance, which the audio, the auto seemed very off. But you know, you can change that there. You can change the brightness. Now I do have a lot of lights behind me, but we'll play with those in a second. Contrast. And this is pretty awesome that they include all of that here. Ah, that's why. I should be at 60 Hertz, so that should fit. No, it still doesn't. And maybe there is a an apply I just don't see. No, okay. All right, so now with the camera setting software loaded, we already look distorted and kind of faded out. But the cool thing is we can come over here and set it any which way we prefer, whatever we find best. And it could be that these lights are causing issues, which actually it's a great time to see how great the lighting control is on this camera. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off these lights one by one. So first one, back there, going back to auto, then this one, another one back there. Now we, oh, that was that one here. Then here and here. Okay, so it does actually look a little bit nicer that since it doesn't have all that lighting on it. And aside from that one light up there, there are no other lights on. So the lighting is actually pretty good. Um, I'll probably switch it over to 60 Hertz since we are in NTSC the United States. If you were PAL, you would want to switch that over to 50 Hertz, 60 Hertz right over here. Over here, you can save and load presets. Since the camera does have memory, you can go ahead and create different presets of different kind of uh, profiles you'd like there. So now we go under advanced and kind of same thing. We can, whoa, we can control the exposure. Okay. And then the gain. Let me not play with that. Okay, six, and then focus, and then we can zoom in. It does a real slow, oh my God. Can you see my atoms there? <laughs> so, and then it zooms out, that's kind of scary. And okay, then we zoom completely out. So that's kind of weird. And then we can pan it. This is the cool feature of the camera or one of the cool features of course so cool toys there and then support for warranty faq customer support newsletter manuals beta test might do beta testing i like that and then if we had any other cameras we can select them here options clear all presets file exit help all right so that's a pretty cool little toy for our new little toy so we'll come over here to video 
and that looks like it's switched to 4K. So right now, you're not only seeing me, but you're hearing me from the microphones there. So I don't know how it sounds just yet. I'm not recording with this guy at this moment. I was before, but now I'm not. Okay, so we are, so let me go ahead and stop it real quick, see what quality the 4K is. Okay, so stopping that, we'll come over here and I've been doing some benchmarking here, so pardon the mess. Okay, so it comes over here to pictures and camera roll. 4K. So right now you're not only that looks pretty sharp. So let's see. We'll go to properties, details. So it's recording at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And then over here, photos at 4K, videos. Even though that 1080p looked good. So do 2160, which is 4K. And, and we'll do 60 Hertz. Okay. And then we'll start recording. So now we're recording at 4K and also recording from the microphones on the camera. So let's see how this looks. So I'm gonna stop it. Then we'll come back to pictures, camera roll. Start recording. So now we're recording at 4K. Okay. And also so let's see properties, details, look at that, 3840 by 2160 at 48 hertz, uh, kilohertz, sorry, at 29.89 frames per second. So 30 frames per second. Camera seems pretty nice so far. I found the little clip I was missing right over here. It flew behind one of my cabinets, which it was why it was a little bit difficult for me to find. So here we can, you want to make sure since this is IR that it is facing the camera, then zoom and zoom out all from the remote, no hands. See, all right. And then we can, when we're zoomed in, there we go. Then we can pan and tilt around. But again, that's only when you're zoomed in because you, well, it's, you can't expect it, but this camera doesn't do it, that it'll manually move around like that. So I think that's a pretty cool feature. The fact that it'll pan and zoom and tilt around like that. And then you can control your zoom for when you're in presentations. That's just all with the windows camera. So stopping over here. Now we're going to go ahead and take a picture. We already saw the camera was set at 4k, but so now we just took a picture and if we come over here to pictures, again, it was a brand new install. So look at that. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. So coming out of there. All right. So now we were focused within this app, but as I mentioned, you can use Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studio. So let's go ahead, jump out of there. OBS Studios. Then over here under sources, add, add video capture device, and then create new. Then we'll select the camera and let me fix that. It looks horrible. Maybe it'll look better in, ah, oh, okay. So yeah, it's kind of stretched out, but of course you can always fix that. And then we'll close out of here. That was OBS studios. We can come into stream labs. Then we see our webcam here and let me go ahead and so there we go. The zooming made it weird. So continue and skip. And then over here sources the same way we did before video capture devices and add source, add source. Then we have the camera here and close. And then of course, like we did before, we can adjust it. And then of course we'd have to adjust this to be a little bit bigger, but you get the point. You can use it with your webcam software. You can use it with anything. Now I'm recording from my camera, my regular camera from the Rode microphone. So you can hear the differences on how it sounds. Now, 
I'm gonna go ahead, open up the webcam again. Just type in camera and we'll go ahead, record again. So while I was recording back and forward from this camera back to the road and that camera behind me, one thing I wasn't playing with, so you may not be able to see it. There is an OSD on the screen. Now, I don't know, I, I can't see what you see just yet, but here we can go ahead and set up. We can do the auto framing and auto framing sensibility. Let's see. Ah, that's, that's what I was trying to show you before the auto framing. It, it did, it wasn't open. So now we've gone ahead and enabled it. So now if you're in a meeting and it's a bunch of you and you're the only one talking, the camera's going to go, Hey, wait a minute. Ah, okay. Let me center him in a little bit. And it's kind of moving, but you know, you can see where I'm going with it or where it's going with it. And then, you know, so I thought that is a cool feature coming back into the menu. Let's see. So we have that image style default. Let's see what the options are. Clarity. That looks pretty clear. Bright. Doesn't look dark. Soft. It's incredibly soft. Default, uh, default was fine. USB mode bulk, ISOC, bulk. Okay, and we'll come back out of here. Okay, so you hit menu to go back. We'll go to exposure. So here you can go through all the different modes. So you can get as granular as you'd like. We'll go to color. Mm, two pink. One push. Var. Auto. Kind of like auto. We can play with it, of course. Image. We can raise the brightness all the way up to 100. All of these. Then we'll go back to menu noise reduction, which might not be a bad thing. I feel like there's a lot of noise. Oh, that's, I think that's better. It's following me around. All right. So version, firmware version of the camera and then restore defaults. Uh, yes, let's go ahead. Okay. So now all the stuff that we changed is back to normal. I like to mess things with a lot. I like to mess with things a lot. So I mess up things a lot as well. So. Minus using it on another conference call. Unfortunately, I didn't have anybody at the moment that I could have used it on, but this video quality would have been the same, you know, OBS and Streamlabs would have been the same depending on what the streaming software can handle. Now, these buttons right over here, they're presets. So I initially thought that a preset, actually one of these numbers, would have included every single thing I set in the camera in one preset every th single thing I set in another preset and so on. But actually the only thing it does is if I zoom up real close and I hit set preset and I press one. Okay. So set one. So you see set preset one. So now if I zoom in even more, sorry, I got to scare you, but set two, set preset two. Okay. So now we see two presets and if I zoom in all zoom out all the way, we'll do set preset three, which is just set and then the number three or set and the number five. So now we have it as three and as five. So now if I want, I just press number one. And now I just press number two and now I just press number three. But if I go back to number two and I press number five. So it works out pretty well for that. But again, I would have assumed that preset is for everything, not just that one little aspect. Maybe you need that preset. I don't know. These buttons down here, F1, F2, F3, F4, currently 
they don't have a use, but potentially they will. I don't know. And likewise, these gray buttons down here don't do anything either. So this seems to be maybe a multi-use control, remote control. I mean, it works well for this as long as line of sight, this little laser has got to hit the camera. So see it there and then zoom out. So it's a pretty cool remote. Aside from the camera itself, it's a nice remote. The camera does have a little light next to the 4K. That is the indicator light to let you know that it's on. There is also a power button so that you can turn the camera on. Off, off is you just have, it freezes on this frame right here. It's actually still recording, oddly enough, but on, turn it back on, and then it picks up to where you are. So it is a weird feature, but you know, it's there if you need that kind of stuff. Now, another pretty important feature a lot of you would like is the focus. So right over here, you may or may not be able to read it. We're in 4K. If I bring it up close, it actually does a pretty good job of keeping in focus so you can actually read it. It's not just a blurry mess. Now on a regular camera, this might be an issue that you have to, you know, zoom, unzoom, focus, but this, it's actually pretty good. I'm actually pretty surprised. Now, this is a 4K camera, so I'm gonna go ahead, stop it here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it from 4K to 2K, still at 60 Hertz. Then we'll go ahead and record it here. I'm myself not noticing a huge difference, but I'm also on this side of the camera. You know, you gotta tell me how it looks on your side. Again, it looks perfect over here. So now I'm gonna stop it, come over here. Then we're gonna go ahead and drop it to 1080p. And we'll start recording again. Now, yeah, to me this, even though it's sharp, it still looks a little tiny bit blurry. And even though that light up there does look like this one right here, it looks like it's on, but it's off. Um, but. You can see how good or bad it is. You have to let me know. So again, four K. Two K. Or ten eighty P. Let me know what you think is best. And then like all webcams, we have the little back in right over here so that the clip right over here so that it stays on your screen doesn't fall back and then this so that you can adjust it now this also swivels like that as well up and down so you get the perfect image and it does not rotate you can't turn it like this so that is a slight downfall but i would say it's not horrible this is rubber right over here to keep it right back here perfectly. So as you saw in the recording, the camera actually was kind of tilted this way, but depending how I'm facing, this is a 13 inch laptop. It is not tremendous, although it is a little bit large at seven inches long. It's not that tremendous, but you know, if you needed to adjust it, you can raise it up or down. So very adjustable. Again, you can't tilt it left or right, but if it's a laptop, you can always move it around like this. So a lot better than the webcam on this laptop because it's down here, horrible placement. But anyway, so that is my review of the Nexigo N970P webcam. It is a nice webcam. It has a few oddities like any webcam or webcam software would. The oddities are not on the webcam. The webcam I think is great. It could benefit from some software, maybe some software enhancements, but the oddity to me was more the remote control. These buttons all together, you just, there's no use for them. So I find it weird. Now, mind you, they're here 
and they're not usable because this is probably used on other webcams or TVs or something along those lines. And it would cost a little bit more for them to have to design an entirely new, at least frame over here, though it might actually save on the circuitry, but they might have to design a new PCB. So, you know, take your pick pros and cons. I think it's a nice camera at a good price. I'll go ahead and post an Amazon affiliate link down below where you could check out the camera if you'd like. I think it is a pretty sweet camera. I also don't like the fact that it doesn't bring its own batteries, but that's a normal thing as well. Everything that they have to do extra, you're gonna have to pay for it in the end. So save a few bucks here, and you probably, chances are you have batteries laying around in your drawer anyway. So this is Iggy with This Bites For You doing a review on the Nexago N970P webcam. Let me know down below what you think. Iggy out, see you guys.